Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Solar. So today we are going to be checking out the Sun Gold Power 200 amp hour vertical battery. And this is what I would call like a mid-size 48 volt battery. It's, it's not as small as a server rack battery. It's not quite as big as some of the other wall mount batteries out there. But I do think if you don't need a ton of storage capacity, this battery may work out for you because it can power an inverter about up to 10,000 watts. Now I know when you look at this, it doesn't look like a mid-sized battery, and that's because you're looking at the front of it. It is fairly wide like a normal wall mount battery, but when you turn it sideways, that's where you see how thin this is. It's only, I think it's less than six inches uh, thick right here. So it's gonna sit up against the wall. It's not gonna stick out into the room very far, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna take up as much room as you think. So we'll go ahead and boot this up. Now this is a touch screen. I'm not real fond about the color scheme with this light blue and light green. With white letters, it's really kind of hard to read. So you can come in here and change the protocol uh, for the communication. So you have CAN bus right here, select that. And you can pick either Pylon, Victron, or Snyder for CAN bus. And then 485, you can do Voltronic or Pylon uh, wow, I'm not for sure which one that one is, and then Lux Power. So it'll work with several different types of inverters. Now if we go back, you can see it's 99% charged. Total discharge is 21 kilowatt hours. I did discharge this and do a capacity test. Go to alarms, there is none. Go to your cell voltages. You can see all the voltages, all the temperatures. And then of course you got your quick indicator lights here at the bottom. So all your connections are up here on the top of the battery. And the one thing I see that is weird is it has a link in and link out. And this is normally for the battery communication between batteries. I don't see one that's dedicated to talk to the inverter. So that we'll see how this works out when we start testing. You have your on off button here, and then you have all your battery connections. And they're, they're a little bit different because instead of using bolts, this actually has lugs and then you have a bolt or a nut and a washer that come off. So a little bit different. And then you have these caps that go over it and this plastic nut that retains, that retains the cover in place. You just screw it onto the end of the lug. So like I said, I did run a capacity test on this battery and the test results were 205 amp hours, actually a little bit higher than that. And this is a 200 amp hour battery, so it did pass the capacity test. I was a little concerned that it wouldn't because the screen stays on all the time. And my test is only like three and a half amp draw. It's a real uh, slow drain of the battery. It took three days to completely drain this battery and it still passed. I was afraid that the screen would would take up so much energy it, that it would fail the test, but it still passed just fine. So the, the screen being on must, must not use hardly any energy for it not to affect the test like that. So this right here, this is a server rack battery from Sun Gold Power. Uh, these are fairly common batteries, but the problem with these batteries is they just only have 100 amps of output. And you take the 51.2 volts times it times 100 amps, this battery can only produce 5,120 watts of power. And that's most of the time you're gonna have an inverter that uses more power than that or produces more power than that. So you normally have to buy two of these, put them in parallel to be able to power bigger inverters. As in for this wall mount battery here, it does 200 amps output, which makes it output just over 10,000 watts of power. So this battery by itself should be able to do roughly a 10,000 watt inverter or lower, making this battery maybe a little bit more convenient because you just one battery and you're done. As in these server rack batteries, you have to have two of them, parallel them together, and then you have to have some type of racking system to be able to mount them. And this vertical battery, it's made to sit on the floor and it comes with brackets to secure it to the wall. We'll go ahead and we'll lay this battery down. Let's get her opened up. See how she's built on the inside. <laughs> okay. 
So one thing I noticed as soon as I opened up the cover is that these connectors are glued to the front display so you can't just pop these out. And these cables, they are just long enough for you to set this cover right beside the battery. You just gotta be really careful. So you can see we've got four rows of battery cells in here. And if we look under the cover, you can see that they are laser welded onto the terminals of the battery. And you can also see all the connections for the voltage and temperature readings. Now it looks like we've got flexible bus bars between each of the rows. We've got two four gauge positive cables coming up here to the front. And on the negative, they did it a little differently. It actually has four seven gauge cables. You don't see seven gauge very often. And they're going down, of course, to the BMS system and then back out of the BMS system with four seven gauge cables over to the negative terminals. So you can see the battery hold downs on top, but on the sides, there's also some hold downs on the sides, squeezing each row of batteries in. So here's a better look at the top. You got your battery management system down here in the bottom, communication board on top. Every one of these connectors is glued in place on all of these circuit boards. So overall, I do not see anything necessarily bad, anything I would call a red flag. Now I know a lot of these battery manufacturers, they use either parallel cables like this or the four cables like the ground. I would prefer to just have one large cable in there. So it came with, it came with these one aught battery cables. These are actually like nice, super flexible battery cables, one aught. It would be nice if they used the same size cable on the inside, that way you know that you, you have the exact same capacity in the battery as you do on the wire on the outside. And that's nothing, that's not a dig necessarily at Sun Gold Power. That's just a lot of these batteries are that way. And I think they're doing this parallel smaller cable because it's probably saving them money, but it would be nice to see it with the nice bigger gauge on the inside. That would, that'd be a nice change. So let's go ahead, we'll put this back together and then we'll get it mounted on the wall. We'll get it hooked up to an inverter. So on the back of the battery, there are several pre-drilled holes here in the back. It does come with these support brackets and you can just attach it to one of these holes here and then attach the other side to the wall. That'll keep this from being knocked over. So like I said, the brackets included in this are just for support to keep it from getting knocked over. It's made to sit on the floor and this is supposed to hold it in place against the wall. But you can mount it on the wall if you want to. You see all these extra screws in here. They sell a, a bracket that goes all the way across and then you can actually hang it up on the wall off the ground, but you have to buy that bracket separately. It'll cost you about $90 if you want to go that route. So for testing purposes, we are going to hook it up to the Sun Gold Power uh, 6500 watt inverter that we have here. So we'll take these one aught cables that came with the battery and we will get them mounted up inside the inverter first. Now we'll take our little retainer nut off of there and then we can take off the cover. Take off our nut and washers. And this cable can only be mounted straight up and down on here, the way this is designed. Now we can slide our cover back over, at least you're supposed to be able to. It's hitting the actual uh, heat shrink on the lug maybe, or the lug itself. Yeah, there's probably a little issue right there. So the opening for the wire to go through is not as wide as the width of that lug. That lug's really wide. So I could probably shave a little bit off of this cover or you could put a new ring terminal on there to fix that. Just to show you a comparison, you can see this lug is way wider than the opening in the cover. So that needs to be probably addressed. So I looked in the manual on how to wire up the communication so you could use the link in to communicate to the inverter and then you can use the link out to communicate to up to 32 more of these batteries. 
And then we take the other end of this cable and we plug it into the uh, CAN bus port. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and power it up and uh, we'll see if this communicates. Well, it looks like the communication's working. It, it sees that the battery is 99% state of charge. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'll turn off the AC breaker and the, there's no solar hooked up right now, so this is only running off the battery, like off-grid mode. And we'll go ahead and put some loads on this. We'll start running some stuff off the battery. Now, the trick is this battery can output 200 amps, but this inverter only require, can, it the maximum it uses is 140 amps. So we'll never pull full amperage out of this battery. In fact, I don't have an inverter on the wall right now that even pulls that much. So hopefully in the future, we'll get a bigger inverter up here and then we can really push these batteries to the maximum. So for this test, we're just gonna use an amp meter on DC. We'll clamp around the positive wire. We'll see how many amps we get out of it. I think this heater will do four or 5,000 watts. Oh, she's on. Well, that heater must be around 5,000 watts because we got a, about a perfect 100 amps. You can see we got 4.7 kilowatts coming out of the inverter. So the battery's outputting about 5,000 watts. The inverter's doing 4,700 because there is a conversion loss. When you convert DC to AC, you are gonna lose some power to heat. So we can get this going without tripping it. Oh yeah, we're about the max right there. Yeah, right there you can see we're pulling 134 amps. So we're almost to the max that the inverter can use. Guarantee if I try to get that to go higher, I'll trip it. Hundred and thirty-nine amps right there. Pretty good. There she tripped out. Well, we got the inverter up to its max output and we were able to draw 139 and a half amps from the battery but this battery should discharge up to 200 amps max, and I think it'll charge at 140 amps max. So the battery cells inside of here are designed for 8,000 cycles, and this battery comes with a 10-year warranty. Now, right now on their website, I looked it up today, this is, this is priced at $2,250. I believe it is free shipping, and that makes a big impact because you go buy one of these other batteries, you may pay two, three, four hundred dollars to ship it. So free shipping does make a, a big difference when you're pricing batteries. Now I do feel like there's a few improvements they can make to this. One is gonna be the screen. I don't think there's enough contrast between the background and the letters to be able to read it clearly. And then the, the touch screen itself is awfully hard to push on to, to change the screens. The other problem of course is these little covers that come and fit over the cable. These don't fit over the factory cables that come with it. So they need to address something there and get that fixed. It would be nice if they would make these bigger. I think this nice big cable is nice. I do, I, th I like the one-aught cable. It would be nice if they had lugs on top that were little, maybe a little bit bigger for that size cable. And then there's one thing they could add to this battery. It doesn't have a breaker. And I always like having a battery. I like that secondary protection. Now the BMS, the battery management system that's in here, it will do, uh, you know, it will shut off the battery if you overamp or have a short circuit, but I like having that breaker, a secondary means of disconnect so you know you're working on it safe. Uh, I do think that that's something that all batteries should end up having on them. Other than that, I think the, the build quality of the battery, I think everything's good here. I like that it's nice and thin against the wall. I think it only sticks out maybe three inches further from the inverter. And some of that has to do with these brackets because they hold this battery out from the wall probably two inches. So if you guys are interested in the Sun Gold Power 200 amp battery, I will leave links in the description below and I will get some loads on this and I will continually run this for a while. I'll let you know if I have any issues with it. So I think that's gonna be it for this video guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.